we must also double down on investments that provide stability for the people of this city. New Yorkers need affordable housing, health care, child care, education, and reliable government services that allow families to thrive. And that is City Council Speaker Adrian Adams laying out a bold agenda with big promises to New York City today in her State of the City address. The plan's contrasting with Mayor Adams' more conservative approach to the city's finances. Yeah, we're actually joined by Mayor Adams right now, who attended the City Council's speaker's address today. Mr. Mayor, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's so good to be on with you. All right, so Mayor Adams, this council is being praised as the most diverse and also the women majority. So what's the relationship between your office and the City Council? Well, I think that the duality of our roles of, you know, look over at this end of City Hall, you see a woman in majority, five for the first time deputy mayors. And I couldn't sit in my seat. I was jumping up so much clapping <laughs> for the speaker. Uh, listen, we are in alignment and we must have two different approaches to balance out what we're doing. Uh, you know, but the name of the game, uh, her agenda is the same as my agenda, lifting up working class people. That is what we did together in our first budget. We did it together in our second budget, and we're going to do it again in our third budget. So, Mayor, let's talk about some of that alignment. So, the speaker mm -hmm. laid out a very ambitious agenda, fully fund 3K programs, mm -hmm. hire more city workers, more services, more funds for nonprofits. And your office is usually more financially cautious. So, are you aligned in those areas and kind of in sync? Yes, and she also mentioned that we're seeing a sunsetting of stimulus dollars in the pre-K and 3K. She said these are difficult decisions we have to make, and together we're going to make the decision. And she also talked about um, city workers. She joined me when we did hiring halls in her district because we knew we had 14,000 vacant jobs that we could not get New Yorkers in the employment area, and we're doing that. She supported the decision we made of raising the salary of 94% of city workers. Of, so we've been in alignment with that. We know the power of, of 3K, of pre-K. We know the power mm -hmm. of housing. She's leading by example as she talked about the housing project in Aqueduct. As we're saying, it should be a city of yes. Too many communities were not avail building affordable units. We are in alignment with these items. And we know those city uh, vacancies are now down to somewhere around 3,000. A vacancy in the which area? The Are you jobs. talking about employment? Yeah, employment. And, and, no, we still have a high number. We okay. just lifted the hiring freeze. We're getting ready to go into those communities where you see high unemployment number, particularly around black New Yorkers. The numbers are dismal. Uh, communicating with Reverend Sharpton about how we want to uh, move together and go into these communities. We believe in taking these solutions to the street. We're doing hiring halls in all of these communities. And uh, trust me when I tell you she's going to join me in some of them like she did before. Mayor Kendis here. How do you feel about the council's oversight generally of city council? Co-governance. I made this clear before. I believe in co-governance not only with our city council, but every senator is a co-governor with me. Every assembly person, every district leader. Uh, we do not take the attitude that because we're the mayor uh, that we don't need all of our partners. A group have traveled with us throughout this entire state, and I think that's the way this democracy was built in this city. Co-governance. I have the re obligation and responsibility of the large number of city agencies, but but they are the ones that actually vote on uh, the budget that we presented to them, and that's what the, the founding uh, mothers and fathers wanted, co-governance. And, Mayor, you know, new today, we kind of learned of Westfield breaking its lease with Fulton Center due to crime, and other major retail chains also claim they are leaving the city because of retail theft. That Westfield deal, that was part of a $1.4 billion project. What does it say about your city when you have these businesses that are pulling out because of the crime in the city? Well, it's, it's, it's our city. We're in this together, and we need to we always be clear on that, and that's what co-governance is about. We need to make sure we pass the right laws. You saw the numbers uh, even in the transit system. You had a small number of people that, I think it was 38, uh, that committed over uh, 1,100 crimes were arrested for in this city, so we need to make sure that we have good, strong laws. We need to make sure our prosecutors prosecute. We need to make sure our DAs uh, and our 
while judges keep guilty people in jail, we saw a decrease in uh, shoplifting in this city. And this is something our task force put in place in the beginning. These are not victimless crimes. When you see repeated offenders, a small number of people, those shoplifters, I think the number was 385, were arrested over 7,500 times in our city. I think it was 572 to be exact. But look at those numbers. And so we don't want our retailers to leave. And just as some is leaving, let's be honest here, there are many who are coming. Okay. A lot of people have opened their headquarters here. This is an exciting place to do business with our diversity and people who are here. So we uh, know that public safety is crucial. You heard me say it over and over again. And we're going to continue to go after those shoplifters. All right. Well, let's talk about the state budget really quickly, because the state is leaving out an extension of mayoral controls of schools in their proposal. Does that mean that you could actually lose control of the schools? What would, that, uh, what, uh, what uh, would happen then? Well, I, listen, I think it's like Yogi Berra. It ain't over until it's over. Oh. You know, I've been up there. I know what it's like in Albany. I know how uh, we go back and forth and negotiate. What happened was there were two one-house bills. The governor put in uh, her uh, proposal. The two houses put in their proposals. There's a lot of conversation. What we don't want to do, we don't want to go backwards. We're leading the state in reading and math. Because of what Chancellor Banks has done, we have a national reading program that others are starting to duplicate throughout the state. We have our dyslexia screening, so we don't have 30% of our inmates in jail because they're dyslexic. Uh, we are moving forward, and we're, we, we believe our partners up in Albany are going to look at what we have done with the school system and okay. keep moving in the right in the right direction. Pre-mayor control, we have 50% graduation rate, rate, record. Pro, uh, pro, post mayor control, we have over 80% graduation rate. I think it speaks for itself. All right. Well, Mr. Mayor, we thank you for your time today. Thank you. Take care.